My name is Martin, and I'm going to show you how to use the GitLab API to for testing and prototyping using graphical user interface programs such as uh, Postman or, in this example, uh, Insomnia. First of all, what is an API? API stands for Application Program Interface or Programming, and you can think of it as another tool to interact with a server. So one tool that you know and use every day is a web browser, and it also uses different servers APIs. So uh, to show you to show you what you do using an API, your client, so in your everyday life, this is a web browser, sends some kind of request in some kind of format. Uh, asking the server for something and gets a response. So some of these words will be recurring uh, as you read and use, read about and use an API. And so uh, the type of API we will be talking about and using is a REST API. So REST is, a, is some kind of, is the kind of standard. If you call your API a REST API, your users will expect it to support certain uh, features or methods, as we, we, we call them, and so and certain formats. And so the most popular format of data is JSON. Uh, you probably have seen it. Uh, if you've seen uh, some code, uh, it has, you know, you can recognize it by uh, brackets and columns and commas. Uh, and values being in pairs on, or sets. And so you you send you send some data formatted this way uh, using one of the the HTTP methods, and you can think of them as verbs. And so the most popular four are get, post, put, and delete. Um, and you you send them using uh, a web protocol such as HTTP. And then server the server sends you uh, a response. Um, and I said the browser does this, uh, and it does. And you can see it, uh, for example, uh, if you look at the Explore Projects page um, on gitlab.com. <clears throat> and like in many, many places in GitLab, uh, you can just type dot .json at the end of uh, your current URL, and you can see what the browser sees. So this is this is a JSON because it starts uh, with a curly bracket and ends with it. But for us, it's not very attractive data, at least like for your human eyes, because this is the the website's HTML, along with I think along even with uh, CSS classes, and so. Um, yeah, and so what the browser does is formats the data for us, uh, so it's easier for humans to consume. But for text data, uh, we can use an API, uh, and if you're programming or scripting something, if you know a scripting language, uh, like the, for the Linux shell or uh, Perl or Python, uh, you can use, or I think JavaScript as well, uh, you can use uh, an API to to do things to do uh to hack something interesting together, and so the HTTP protocol uh supports a bunch of verbs, and the four like I said the four most useful ones are get, post, put, and delete. Get is one that you would call idempotent, meaning we can call it many many times, and always. Uh, and get the same result, so to say, uh, meaning your GET requests are not changing anything on the server. A POST request uh, is doing something. So for example, uh, so creates a new resource. So in, uh, in this demo, we're going to create a project. And so our request is going to be a POST request here. PUT requests change things and delete requests 
asks ask to delete uh, some data from the server. Uh, there is a couple more, but when you run into them, you can you can read on read up about them. I haven't used many other. And so we take our requests and we prepare our data and we aim it. And we aim it at a URL. Sorry. Um, that are uh, also called endpoints. And so, if you know the well, if you don't know the specific API, it needs to be documented. And by uh, browsing its documentation, you learn about the endpoints that they offer. And so, for these are some example endpoints. Uh, that would be articles. Right? And so if you want to view um, the list of some art articles, then whatever organization is offering this API, you would use this URL. And how do we know this? Probably from their documentation website. Um, and so if it's like a news, or a news website, they could maybe have an endpoint for authors, for browsing comments, for browsing categories. And this will match nicely to uh, what GitLab offers um, in our quite big API. Um, then when you get data from the server, there are two things in the response. Um, the, thing, the, the, the main thing that we will focus on is the response body, also known as the payload. And it's if it's a JSON API, it will be formatted in the JSON format. Um, the second part is for, mostly for the machines, and it's the head, and so uh, it has some additional information. We will not be looking into it, um, but it's available. The next thing you should know are the HTTP status codes. And if you've used the browser uh, for just browsing the internet, you should have encountered quite a couple of them, um, mostly the 400s, uh, which show you that there was a problem uh, with either the website you're looking at, you're looking for, or I don't know. An, an, yeah, basically that. So 404 um, error, we would say, uh, means not found. Something we want to see uh, when playing around or when using an API is 200 or 200 something. It's uh, these status codes show you uh, that uh, your operation was a success. And so uh, here's, a, here's a connection on uh, the MDN docs. And so these are the broad categories. 100s are informational, 200s are successful, uh, 300s uh, inform you that there is a redirection, uh, 400s, uh, 400 errors show you about, tell you about the client error, like there's something on your, something not wrong on your side, and then 500 errors, uh, there's a problem on the side of the server. Um, yeah, and um, Right, so there are many, you can use many different uh, uh, clients to uh, work with an API to play around with it. Uh, if you don't want to use uh, a code solution, let's, uh, you can also use external clients. And so let's start with you uh, looking at a web, uh, website one, an online one. There's plenty of them. I don't have a preference. Um, so this one is called Hopscotch. I liked it because it used to be called Postwoman, which is which it would was a play on words, on uh, Postman, the most popular uh, app. And um, let's start by looking at at the Dog API, which is one of the uh, very many free APIs uh, that you can find uh, around the internet. Mm, they don't normally require you to authenticate or to uh, set up an account. But on the other hand, uh, there would be uh, some kind of limitation, like uh, most probably 
how many requests you can send a minute or what an hour I don't know and so what what the the dog API does uh, you can see from the website um, you can using this endpoint you can uh, fetch uh, a random image yeah so that is random altogether if you want to use an external client for this uh, we can copy this endpoint and paste it here. Uh, we choose this, the type of request and it's a GET request uh, because we just want to see what's there on that endpoint uh, and we send it. And so this is not very attractive uh, looking uh, response body because we just get the URL. If we go to it, uh, then uh, we will see that, yes, it is a picture. Uh, we didn't know it was going to be an Irish Terrier, so it's it's random. Uh, but another thing you can do uh, with this API, let's see the documentation. You can list all breeds. Uh, let's see. You can list... Uh, uh, you can ask for... Uh, to, for example, to list all subbreeds. And here, again, we copy the endpoint that they give us, paste it here, and send it. And as a result, we get the same thing that they show on the website. Um, and so a list. You can see that this is in the JSON format again because yeah, the external most uh, bracket pair is a curly brackets and then lists or probably an array or in uh, square brackets. Um, so yeah, there's uh, a million different APIs you can find online and play around with. Um, so this is Hopscotch. Uh, the most popular tool is Postman, unless you use some kind of code solution or you use curl. Um, uh, which you you use from the command line, and this is one of the the most popular uh, programming tools ever. Um, so I don't use Postman, but it's fine. I, uh, for me, it's just, it's it offers too much for my needs. Uh, I started liking and using Insomnia, which uh, is a bit simpler. Uh, but in the end, they are both electron-based apps, and uh, they will probably work as well on your system.